It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Lindsey Crosby, host of Locked On MLB Prospects. Now that we've reached the halfway point of the MLB season, we're gearing up for the MLB draft. It's coming up in just a few weeks, and there's lots of storylines to discuss. Who will Baltimore draft number one overall? Drew Jones, son of big leaguer Andrew Jones? Or maybe Tamar Johnson, who has the best hit tool of any prep player drafted in the last decade. We know it's going to be a hitter-heavy draft. There may not be a pitcher drafted in the top 10 picks for the first time since the draft was instituted in 1965. We'll have you covered with everything you need to know as we run up to the MLB draft and then pivot to the trade deadline as the playoff contenders exchange prospects for the pieces they need for the stretch run. Check out Locked On MLB Prospects. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Today on Locked On Rockies, the Pirates are back in town. Usually something to be excited about, but not quite this year. You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans and Pirates fans, welcome into a Locked On Podcast Network crossover between the Locked On Rockies podcast and the Locked On Pirates podcast. I'm one of your hosts today, Paul Holden, joined by the host of the Locked On Pirates podcast, Ethan Smith. Ethan, how are things? Dude, uh... For everybody wondering, me and Paul are kind of in the same spot. You guys might notice over at Locked On Pirates, you don't see the wonderful backdrop that I usually have with all the stuff right now, uh, moving, having a fun time. It took like three hours to get internet to even get you guys this podcast. So hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, Also, all the uh, messages from the audience, by the way, I know the last time you guys were asking about trades, me and Paul are going to get into that this time. Don't worry about it. Absolutely. We're going to dive into what these teams are going to look like at the deadline, what these teams look like for the rest of 2022, and of course, what these teams look like right now as the Rockies and Pirates are meeting up for a nice weekend set at Coors Field. Before we dive into things, got to remind you that this is the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day, free and streaming on your favorite streaming platform, and we're streaming live on YouTube right now on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel. But if you want to stay up to date with all things your favorite team, you got to subscribe to your favorite host on Locked On uh, wherever on YouTube because it's a massive, massive help to us here on the podcast network. And let's dive in, Ethan. Uh, the Rockies just finished up a stretch against the NL West and played pretty good. They did get swept by the Dodgers, They, uh, but they do go back. They actually take a series from the Dodgers. They take a series from the Diamondbacks, and they win three or four against the Padres to move to eight and three on the season. And now the Pirates come into town, and you'd usually sit there and say, hey, it's the Pirates. This is an opportunity for the Rockies to to continue some some series wins, continue to move things along. But that hasn't been the case with these two teams. The Pirates have played the Rockies incredibly well this season, and not just the Rockies, but the entire NL West. Yeah, uh, I know we did Rockies fans a favor uh, by beating the Dodgers in that wonderful three game set in LA. Pirates are uh, six and two against the Dodgers and the Yankees this year. Uh, for everybody wondering. But, I mean, the Rockies are hot right now, dude. They just came off of a series beating the Padres. The the Pirates played the Padres pretty well earlier this year. Uh, I don't believe we played the Diamondbacks yet. I think that's the only team in the division that we have not seen uh, because we have played the Giants as well. But, I mean, the last time these two teams met, things were a little different. Chris Bryant wasn't in the lineup. Uh, The Rockies were also kind of teetering. But they are obviously a way better home team. Then they are a road team. I think a lot of people know that the ball flies out of course field. Trust me. I play MLB the show 22 enough to know that the ball flies out of course. Um, but the pirates for the series, they just came off of, I mean, they win the first two games in Miami pretty convincingly. I mean, I know the second game of that series was three to two, but the pitching was on point the entire series. You just so happen to lose an 11 and 10 innings in the other two. And it's just like, Man, you got to start winning these close games if you're the Pirates. I know this team isn't exactly like the greatest team, but fun fact about the Pirates, they are 40 and 36 this season as an underdog. So they have a winning record when they are the underdog. So what does that tell me? 
They don't know how to win when they're actually favored, which they're not favored in this series. But for the Rockies and the Pirates, even, this is a very important series to separate these two teams. And exactly because it's uh, for the if it's for the Rockies side, you're about six and a half games out of that third wild card spot at this point in the season. If you want to continue to try to make ground, you just had great success against the division. And as I've said many times on the pod uh, on the Rockies side, it is every division win for the Rockies is worth more than any other win because it's it's going to have it, it helps you get to that wild card spot a little bit more because odds are there's going to be one maybe even two uh representatives from the nl west there at the wild card it comes the end of the season but now when it comes to the pirates you gotta beat a team like this and maybe i, I blew things out of proportion when you look at the last series uh the the bolt two the, the first two games between the rockies and the pirates uh both two one games uh with the pirates taking the first one the rockies taking the second one but the pirates exploding for 10 runs there in game three but the pirates again and they they seem like they're hanging around and they seem they seem like they've put some stuff together and kind of again if, if you look at things just like when you look at the Rockies there's storylines to like so what have you, what have you been enjoying about Pirates baseball right now what are now we're we're getting to the middle point of the season we've seen some players play for a bit what are some of the bright spots on this Pirates team right now I know it's a cop out but O'Neill Cruz definitely mm-hmm. at the plate he's struggling a little bit but. You know, I mean, the guy also just broke a stack cast record again yesterday for the hardest hit or hardest thrown ball in the stack cast era by a position player. Uh, Key Brian Hayes has done his thing. Brian Reynolds, before he got hurt, he had a great month of June, uh, did phenomenal things in June, was picking it up a little bit in July. And now he's on the 10 day. Really, it's been the pitching, though, man. Like. JT Brubaker has done good things. Rowanzi was doing good things before he got shut down. Interesting thing about Rowanzi is um, he only pitched 61 innings last year, didn't pitch in 2020, so that's why he got shut down. Uh, JT Brubaker and Zach Thompson also have done their thing. So the pitching is there. Would I like to see a little bit more from the offense? Of course. We're not seeing as much as what you would like to see from the offense to back up these quality six innings that these guys are giving, but The bullpen has been phenomenal. Of course, the lone all-star for the Pirates being David Bednar. I forget who the lone all-star for the Rockies is, but... C.J. Crone is the... C.J. Crone. Yeah. Why? I'm not surprised. He's had a great Mm -hmm. year. Uh, But the bullpen has been good. The starting pitching has been good. And that's where tonight uh, you bring up... uh, We'll talk about this later about trade pieces, but you're going to probably see the Pirates' biggest trade piece pitch tonight, Jose Quintana. And that's what I'm liking to see is the Pirates, a lot of these small market teams, they need the pitching to really elevate them. And that's what I hope they continue to do. Pitching is so important for, for teams. And, and you can always find, I mean, there's always going to be some people that can put some thump in the ball, but if you have a solid rotation, if you have solid pitchers, I feel like that's one of the more difficult things and something you can get really excited about as a team that's starting to grow and you know still in that rebuild type of mode. If you got good mm-hmm. pitching, both from the starters and the bullpen, it's something that's uh, to be excited about. And that's before, it, kind of if you look in the past, as things were gearing up on the offense for the Rockies, it was getting more exciting that the competitive teams, the playoff teams, also had those starting line, those pitchers that were successful at cores and actually having impact on those games. And uh, yeah, and one thing that's interesting too, a quick little stat here, and with being at a more hitter friendly ballpark over a uh, study from ESPN's game preview, the Pirates are 23 and seven in games where they out hit their opponents. It's kind of an obvious stat when you think about it because. If you hit yeah, more, you you're going you know, to score more runs. But that's not how it always happens in baseball, uh, especially when it comes to the Rockies. I think there's been multiple games this year where the Rockies have not uh, uh, been able to, to 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 win games when they've out hit their opponents. So, uh, from the offensive side, are you expecting a little hitter friendly ballpark? Is that is that stat going to get better this uh, this weekend? It's possible, but what tells more about that stat, in my opinion, is the Pirates have played 90 games and have only had 30 games where they've out-hit their opponent. That means one-third of the time you're not hitting your out-hitting your opponent. So, again, as I mentioned earlier, the Rockies have a better home record than the Pirates do, but if the bats, by and large, go hot, which... Rockies fans, I'll talk to you for a second. Josh Van Meter, Ben Gamble, Key Brian Hayes, Daniel Vogelbach, O'Neill Cruz, Kevin Newman, Cal Mitchell, Jake Marisnik, and Jason DeLay. The guy with more than 75 at bats that has the highest average in that is Key Brian Hayes batting 251. Not exactly great. Uh, Adrian, no. 
<laughs> I remember you from the last time. No, Bednar <laughs> is not on the table. But, I mean, if this offense can get hot, it's a heavy lefty lineup. I know the Rockies have a lot of righties in their rotation. Chad Cool. Love you, Chad Cool. Glad you've revitalized your career in Colorado. But, I mean, you never know. Like you, like you said and I said, it's a hitter-friendly ballpark. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. And, uh, well, let's dive in. Let's see. The trade deadline's looming. Let's talk about trade pieces. And if you want to add a nice piece of jewelry to your collection or maybe a piece of jewelry to celebrate a milestone moment, well, you can find jewelry as unique as your favorite person with the convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. And Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft the perfect ingredients engagement ring and each ring is one of a kind looking for jewelry but having trouble choosing exactly like i would be in that situation well blue nile has jewelry experts on hand 24 7 they're available they're available on the phone or on the web chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget and we got a great deal for you at BlueNile.com right now. And you can make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Rockies and Pirates listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement. Use code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. That's BlueNile.com. Ethan, what are you hoping your team does? What are you hoping to see from the Pirates when the deadline is here? You're going to see Jeff Passan tweet, the Pittsburgh Pirates have done blank. If And, and, and give, me, give me the extremes. Give me best case scenario for the Pirates right now at the deadline, what the moves and the stuff they make. And give me worst case scenario, what they do at the deadline. Starting with worst case scenario, if Brian Reynolds and David Bednar are not on this team after the trade deadline, the Pirates did something wrong. This team is this close, I think, to adding a couple pieces and being a legitimate wild card contender in 2023. I really think that. If you were an outsider from the Pirates organization and not knowing what was going on, you might be like, Ethan, you're on something. Like, what's going on, pal? What do you want? For me, though, really, it's just a difference in adding to the bullpen, which is already a strength, adding some bats in the lineup that are going to be strengths, which you'll also do in the organization. And I would say the guys that you would think about that you're probably going to see the Jeff Pass and tweet about, definitely Jose Quintana. Quintana will be on that list. He is a guy that me and Jeff Carr and Steven over at uh, Locked on Reds talked about it with the Castillo news. Whenever Castillo gets traded, the next ticker is going to be the Frankie Montes, the uh, J.P. Winkledine, those guys that you hear about that are on the on the market right now. Quintana's in that group. Expiring contract, veteran with a 3.66 ERA. He's been consistent, getting five or six good innings every outing. He's the best trade chip they have, and it's an obvious move to trade him, but I also wouldn't be mad if they keep him. But to name other people... Jake Marisnik is another guy that I think could possibly help another team with his defense and his bat off the bench. Ben Gamble is an energy boost for a lot of people, a lot of different teams. Kevin Newman, who just came back from injury and has actually done pretty well from coming back from injury, batting 292 over the course of 45 at-bats. He'll take that as a contending team. The Pirates have pieces that they can move. Like Daniel Vogelbach even has been arguably one of the better DHs in all of baseball if you look at OPS past the average. But I don't expect, and I've said this and some people have given me slack or flack for it, I don't expect the Pirates to throw everything out the window and be like, okay, what can we get for Bednar? What can we get for Reynolds? What can we get for whoever? I don't think that's going to happen. It's not going to be like last year where Clay Holmes – um all these other guys were all traded, like Clay Holmes, Adam Frazier, all these big names. I don't think you see that this year. But I'll throw the question back at you. Say the Rockies do win this series, which is an expectation, I would assume. Where does that put you guys in the kind of buy-sell buy market for the trade deadline? 
Well, I think we know. I mean, the thing is, we, we've seen some early reports. We actually got a report this week. GM Bill Schmidt went on the record and says the team are, will not be sellers at the deadline. They are already embracing for that. And I think Rockies fans won't be surprised to hear that. Unfortunately, the Rockies should make moves. They need to make moves. And one of them, uh, I think now more than ever, I, you got to trade Jose Iglesias. Uh, he is uh, having a great season. He's obviously been a great part of the Rockies defense. But expiring contract and the big the big part of the future, your big prospect, is at shortstop. The whole idea with Jose Iglesias was, was a stopgap, was to fill time, was to buy time until you can bring people up and bring some of these young guys. He is not the future of shortstop, so you got to be able to move on from him because if, if, who knows? He might come back next year and help you buy a little more time. But why the Rockies need to stop seeing like maybe, like what's up? We got to see about going on and, you know, and, and going about uh, maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do that. the Rockies need to just know and look a little bit ahead. And, and at the end of the day, is it going to be the worst if they get rid of Jose Iglesias? It might. Their, their offense might stutter, at least at this point, with what the way he's producing later. But if you're still not finding yourself in a comp- competitive position, if you, you know, stumble in this series, you, you, you do have to evaluate Alex Colome. Uh, Chad Cool, for example, again might be a, a, you know another one there. I don't think I think the Rockies are more interested in bringing Cool back at this point because he has really started to enjoy uh, Colorado. So again, I, I think you got to make moves at least like for some glaciers. But if you really wanted to make a big splash, if, and if if the Rockies were kind of still, and I was saying this a couple weeks ago before playing a little bit better of the stretch and keeping things relative. I think a lot of teams would be interested in CJ Crone and Daniel Bard. Crone's got that extra year of control. He, he's obviously having a career year. Uh, power bat, first base. Who wouldn't want to be putting a first base power bat DH into their lineup? Somebody that, uh, you know, he's got the bad splits. People might be afraid of that, but he's still going to put give you some big hits. Now, I don't think any of this is going to happen. I think the Rockies are going to make maybe one to two minor moves. They really believe they like to believe in their team. They don't want to do rebuild. They don't want to do this, but there's no lefties on this team in the, in the bullpen. There's no lefties in the organization. There's no depth there. And if you're still looking and if you're still grasping at some straws of a potential third wild card, when it comes to deadline time, you got to be willing to make a move and move and move a, a, a column a uh uh an estevez a uh iglesias even a, you know even considering they're but they're not going to move bard or crone because i'm pretty sure they're going to try to keep that they like them a lot they're really excited you know in the rockies as much as i kind of enjoy the fact that they are committed to players they overcommit and it's just like hey bam cj crone you're you're here we got you and that was a great move but it is also like in the future it's CJ Crone's playing first base for you for two more years, maybe at this point with his contract. When you're getting and having Montero and Tovar and Veen and your future playing at an everyday level, is CJ Crone still going to be playing a factor? And could you move him? That's going to be making a bigger impact when the Rockies are more likely going to be in that chase. Maybe when teams are getting restructured, because eventually the Dodgers are going to have to do something. They have the deep pipeline, sure, but eventually they're not going to be able to buy everybody. They're going to some. They're going to go to different teams. Eventually, the Padres are going to you know are, are will regress. Eventually, the NLS will regress, and the Rockies need to be on the up and up to, to there. While they're at this point where they're they're still fighting for their lives, but again, it's you still sit there and you're just like, well, like if if the chips fall correctly, the Rockies could be in a position to uh, to to be competitive. But I don't want to be sitting there in August still saying like, well, they might when they're still five and a half back when they could have yeah. gotten a, you know they could have flipped Iglesias for a nice left handed uh, arm that's in AAA right now that can come and be major league ready or a nice left handed bullpen arm to come to come help you out now. Yeah, and that's the thing is like these teams have a lot in common. I'll say that. This Rockies team, after watching them, seeing the record, seeing how you're talking about them, reminds me a little bit about the 2018 Pirates. When they were right there, they were right there. They were a couple games back. They said, you know what? We're going to go grab Chris Archer. We're going to go grab Chris Archer. He's going to be the difference. He'll get us in the race. It didn't happen. I'm not saying it'll happen. That's the same way it'll happen for the Rockies. And also, for your own sanity after losing Story and Arenado, I really hope you don't make a Chris Archer X trade with a team to go get some guy that you end up giving up your top prospects for. But 
I don't blame your management for saying, okay, say they sweep the Pirates and the teams ahead of you maybe even win the series but lose a game there. That's a game you're adding on. That's the thing I love about baseball. It's such an intricate little game because, yeah, for Yankees fans, they could think, ah, you know, we just lost to the Reds, that whole deal, like whatever happened in New York this week with the Reds and the Yankees. You never know. Maybe they start slumping in August and that race gets tighter for that top spot in the AL and they have to look back on that series and say, we couldn't beat the Reds once. Like, you know, even the Dodgers, for instance, can go back and look at that Pirates series and say, we squandered three games against the Pirates in the middle of May and that cost us winning the NL West. Mm. It's all things that happen. And that's why I like that the Rockies are coming out and saying, like you said, he's coming out and saying, we're not selling. You have no reason to sell. You're right there pretty much as long as you start playing good baseball. And that's why in 2018 at the time, that Pirates trade didn't seem too bad. But then we didn't know that Shane Boz, Glasnow, and uh, Meadows were going to turn into what they are now. So you never know, man. I, yeah. I, I, it, it's hard. It's very hard, and it is like, yeah, they're, they're, you look at the, the stats and you look at some of these Rockies players, and it is kind of like, this team should be better, but there is, and but it's it's sometimes just kind of being realistic, and I just yep. don't think the Rockies front office is always realistic. They never want to, you know, never want to embrace rebuild, never want to do this, never want to, but instead it's like, you could have just made some shifts, and it could just be something small, and, you know, sometimes even with these expiring contracts, I think players and, and everyone need to be more open-minded to, hey, we're going to send you off at the deadline, but let's talk in the offseason. Like, let, let why not? We're we're in a spot. You can go see what you like. You can kind of experience it, but we're more than willing to, to, to talk about bringing you back. And it, it's I would just like the Rockies to kind of address some of their things. They just they, It just doesn't seem like they are doing a lot. And the big trades they make don't always pan out. Again, uh, you know, the, the big major one, it, the Rockies got one compensatory draft pick for John Gray and Trevor Story. When instead at the deadline last year, the haul the Rockies could have gotten for a nice package of John Gray and Trevor Story to an abundance of teams. That's a five prospect deal right there. Four or five prospects. And it's it's maybe not your 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 ones and your twos, but I'm fine if the Rockies get a nice dose of new prospects of a team because they're because the Rockies farm system got some nice really appealing stuff on the top and then it just is a you know it just falls off completely mm -hmm. and this a major league baseball team needs to have more left-handed arms dang it like, like this team just needs to have, like it's just crazy uh that they don't but uh what was know. that Paul say that again <laughs> <laughs> it's they Wait. need more left-handed arms so. yeah yeah i was gonna say because the pirates once they trade Quintana, i guess how many left-handed arms are gonna have in the starting rotation zero <laughs> guess how many left-handed arms are gonna have in the bullpen two <laughs> that's 13 guys and you have two lefties it's, come on now have we have we seen chris sale pitch back when he was in chicago have you seen Robbie Ray pitch in Toronto and Seattle this year? I mean, have you seen Clayton Kershaw pitch? Dude, a lefty is so important. Every time the Pirates play a lefty, they're screwed because half of our lineup, over 90% of our lineup is lefties. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so it's, important, it's, dude. I agree. I you can't you can't be so overstacked on 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 one side. Just like you can't overstack your bets in one area. And the best place if you want to get your bet action in is betonline.net your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info find all the latest sports development league reviews and news including all the action for major league baseball this year don't miss out on all the fun that bet online your continued source for all your sporting wagering information including live betting esports and scores and bet online remains the best spot for all your sports scores podcasts and news this season betonline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events including mma boxing and golf head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action at bet online where the game starts and let's head on over to bet online here ethan and let's let's preview a little bit of the here and now for these two teams and over on the uh the 
bet online here right now let's take a look at what we got going on uh here for these pirates these rockies all the fun the run line at uh, plus one and a half for uh the pirates but let's take a look at some of the points here over under ethan four and a half runs for the pirates in this one tonight under you're going under you got herman marquez keeping the pirates at bay tonight uh i think this is mm, i don't know it's one of those that could be it's one of those could not be i'm not really sure um I don't know, because Colorado is such a hitter-friendly park that I don't want to say, yeah, definitely the Pirates are going under four runs. But I'll still say under just because I don't know if I trust this offense enough to even score four runs. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Do you are, do you take the plus 256 that Cabrian Hayes has under a hit, is going to be held hitless tonight here in the series opener? No. Over. Yeah, I I, I'm going to tell you, I would take the over on on that one as well. Uh, but if you want, I would take the under on the Randall Gritchick hit tonight. Randall Gritchick has been struggling. He's gotten a couple of big hits, but he hits the ball on the ground a ton there. And that's been uh, one of the kind of the, the, the Rockies traded for Gritchick. Uh, they traded Rymel Tapia to get less ground balls, and Gritchick has now gone and hit uh, a ground ball rate. I think that is seventh highest in all of Major League Baseball. Let's see here. Maybe one more. Let's let's drive here. Uh, let's one see. One more. What do you got? No, I'm just saying one more. Why not? Yeah, one more. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Jose Quintana over three and a half, over under three and a half strikeouts tonight. Over. I think he gets four. I think he goes just over. Just gets the over. Herman Marquez is set at four and a half. I'm going to take the over on that. Herman might, he might still, people might be hitting him, but he has still been able to strike batters out. He has been uh, an efficient, uh, he's been getting better. He's still not as sharp as he can be, but uh, Marquez uh, tonight hopefully is another step in the right direction for him. Ethan, let's wrap up with our series prediction. I got 2-1 Rockies in some classic Coors Field games. I got these games being ridiculous. I got these games sitting in that eight to six Nine to seven. I got a couple of those in there. And then I'm sure there's going to be one where it's going to be zero, zero until the sixth, something like that. I'll say four to three uh, Pittsburgh. I think this is their best chance easily to get, win a game in the series with Quintana on the mound. Uh, you get Keller on the mound tomorrow against Urena. I think that's where you get your high scoring game. And then uh, undecided on Sunday, the Pirates don't know what they're doing. So I think Quintana gets the win. Like the one I think definite win will be tonight just because of how consistently good he has been. So I'll say four to three. I think low scoring still, though. I think Marquez, like you alluded to, will have a pretty good uh, outing against a sluggish Pirates offense. And I think we're in for some good baseball either way. Going to be some great baseball and an even better baseball analysis coming to you all here on the Locked On Podcast Network from two wonderful podcasts, the Locked On Rockies podcast and the Locked On Pirates podcast. I'm Paul Holden. You can find me at Paul Holden 33. You can find Ethan there at MVP underscore Ethan on Twitter. Make sure that you're subscribing to Locked On Rockies and Locked On Pirates on YouTube. Now that you made us your first listen of the day, why don't you go make Locked On MLB Prospects your second listen of the day. And of course, if we want to stay up to date with things across the world of sports the locked on podcast network has you covered ethan close out the show what what's the last closing words that we have for our audience today uh raise a jolly roger obviously and for rockies and pirates fans just uh have fun sub 500 baseball in colorado this weekend just have fun so I enjoy the yeah. Hey, hey, for people from Pittsburgh, maybe in Denver, they're gonna have the best time. Why have no better place to go watch some baseball than in Denver? But uh Ethan, thank you so much for the time. And folks, until next time, this has been Locked On Podcast Network.